I love using this note. Let's check it out. Vellum Balloon. Vellum Balloon is amazing. It lets you quickly create really pleasing soft body simulations. I use this all the time in my projects. Let's take a look at how to create a basic Vellum soft body using Vellum Balloon. First, drop down a sphere. We need to change it from primitive to polygon. Let's reduce the scale to 0.1. We can give it a few more subdivisions. Let's go with six for now. Drop down a Vellum Balloon, add a Vellum solver. Let's jump to four sub steps. I find this is a good starting point for most simulations. We can also add a ground plane as a collider with a single click winner. But now our sphere is intersecting the floor so let's go back and move our sphere up by 0.5. Let's hit play. Let's take a look at some of the parameters of the Vellum Balloon and how we can manipulate them to get the simulation that we want. Vellum Balloon is made up of a Vellum Cloth Constraint and a Vellum Pressure Constraint. As we looked at before, the stretch stiffness in the Cloth Constraint is how much polygons can stretch. This is important to remember when dealing with soft bodies. When we have a high stretch stiffness, it creates a very stiff soft body. Lowering the setting can get you some nice jello. Cloth stretch stiffness and pressure stretch stiffness play hand in hand. You often have to go back and forth adjusting them to allow them to play nicely together. You can also add some bend stiffness into the mix to get some more bendy type soft bodies. You may find that your simulations get a lot of jitter or just never really settle down. You can adjust the damping ratio in the cloth stretch section. Increasing this value reduces the energy Vellum is using to try and evaluate the constraints. So what can we do with Vellum Balloon, let's take a look at two projects. This project is going to be about how to create some spheres that are attracted to a center point with some nice squishy soft body behavior. Let's start by creating a sphere. The sphere is a little bit large so we'll just reduce the scale and then we need to change it from a primitive to a polygon and we'll give it some more subdivisions. Let's drop down a VDB from polygon. This lets us create a fog volume which fills our sphere with a fog. This is great for when we need to scatter some points and we don't want them just to scatter on the surface of the geometry, but rather to fill the geometry with points like we have here. We don't need a thousand points, we just want something like 17. On the other side, let's create another sphere. Here again, we'll change it to polygon. Uh, we'll give it a few more subdivisions and we'll reduce the scale to something like 0 0.1. We'll use a copy to points to copy each sphere onto the points. At the moment, we have a uniform scale on each point. We want to change this so we can use an attribute randomize on our points and we'll change the CD to P scale and give it something like 0 0.4 and one. So now we have some small values and some big values, great. Let's drop down a vellum balloon. As you saw in the previous part of this tutorial, Depending on what values you use, you can get very different results. For this test, I'm going to use something like 10,000 in the stretch stiffness and 0 0.001 in the bend stiffness. In our pressure stiffness, we're going to use 10E plus 10. Very nice, full of pressure. Let's drop down a Vellum solver. We'll give it some sub steps and remove gravity. Let's dive inside. Let's add a pop attract. This node is great. It lets you attract particles or points towards a certain position or point. In this case, we're gonna just attract it to the world zero. So if we look at our grid, we can see that there is zero and all our points are going to be attracted to that position. If we hit play, we get this nice squishy bouncing behavior. You can make it more squishy or less squishy um, by giving it less pressure and less stretch stiffness. But for now, let's add a vellum post process. And this allows us to quite easily add a little bit of facial blur as well as subdivisions. I like to use loop subdivisions on triangles. Something that's great to do is to use this extrude by thickness. This just fills it in a little bit so that the gap where the subdivision has shrunk it now fills it nicely again. The second project is something that I use all the time, inflation. When it comes to Vellum Balloon, you get some really fun results by increasing the pressure's rest length. Let's walk through how to set that up. I started with the grid and scattered some points. I used the basic attribute randomize to randomize the p-scale. I then created a sphere and placed it on top of the floor with a match size. I then picked a point on the bottom to create a group and then later I will pin this group in Vellum. I then copied the spheres to the points with a copy to point. I used a Vellum Balloon to create the soft bodies. I used a stretch stiffness of 1000, a bend stiffness of 0 0.001 and a stretch stiffness of 1 million. Notice I've checked output group and renamed it to p-stretch. We'll use this soon. I then add a Vellum solver. Again, let's jump to four sub steps. Now I can increase the rest length on the pressure node, but this will only be calculated on frame one and will not be a constant adding of 
pressure, but rather on frame two, it'll jump to the new size. If this is what you're after, you're done. If you want to slowly inflate them, let's set that up. Let's dive inside the vellum solver. Add a vellum constraint property. This lets you update all the settings we've looked at before, but we can increase or decrease them over time. For now, I set the group to the P stretch group we created, so we're only affecting pressure. I then keyframe the rest length scale from 1 to 30 over 60 frames. What I sometimes like to do is add another vellum constraint property to affect the stretch stiffness and rest length. It gives some really nice results. You can also time offset the animations, unpin them and have them interact with the collider. The options are endless. Vellum Balloon is definitely one of my favorite tools to play with in Houdini, so why don't you give it a chance? Jump in, try it out, it's Houdini time.